trading options involves some level of risk. But what if I showed you that by using credit spreads, you could significantly reduce that risk while potentially boosting your returns? Exciting, right? Let me show you what I mean. Here you see a bullish put credit spread we did in Berkshire Hathaway, ticker symbol BRKB. Notice that we sold to open the Berkshire Hathaway January 20th, $285 put option. And then we bought for protection the January 20th, $230 put option. For this spread, as you see here, we pocketed $2.47 per share. Let me show you why we felt comfortable doing this bullish put credit spread. Here you see the daily chart of Berkshire Hathaway. Where the white line is, that's our $285 strike price that we sold. And this is actually the day that we did this trade. It was on December 19th. So notice that Berkshire Hathaway had been showing nice strength over the previous couple of months. Notice down the volume section, there was nice buying pressure from the buyers. The green bars representing the buyers, the red bars representing the sellers. So the stock had advanced nicely. It had made a higher high. You see this high here was higher than this high back here. It also made a higher low. This low here was higher than this low here. And it did it again. It went up further in November. We see that it made another higher high. And again, we see it made another higher low. So everything was looking great. Now, a few days before we did this trade, notice that Berkshire Hathaway, it went up to test this 320 resistance area, which again served as resistance for it. As a result, Berkshire Hathaway bounced off that 320 area and came back down to the green 50 and red 200 exponential moving average on this daily chart. And it appeared this downward move was slowing. Notice that although the volume had been increasing as the stock was declining, the day we did the trade actually was a green up day which reflected that sellers had kind of lost their interest and their excitement in selling the stock. And that made sense because it was approaching the green 50 and red 200 exponential moving average. It was also at an area that had previously served as resistance for Berkshire Hathaway back in October, as you see here. Remember that resistance, once it's broken through, it tends to turn to support. And that's what we see happen here with Berkshire Hathaway. I've now switched over to the weekly chart of Berkshire Hathaway up to the day that we sold this bullish put credit spread. Here you see the 285 strike area that we sold the put option at. And then down here at the yellow line, this is the protective put option that we bought. Now the reason we did that is just in case Berkshire or the overall market had a big steep decline. But another reason why some people like to do credit spreads is that it minimizes how much margin they're required to have for each position. Notice that we'd be required to have the difference of these two strike prices, 285 minus 230, so $55 per share, which if you multiply that times the 100 shares, comes up to $5,500. And all this 230 strike price put option does is protects us in the case of a big black swan event where the market takes a big dive. If you're willing to pay a little more for your protection, you of course could sell a put option that's closer to the one that you sold. But we chose to go with the 230 put option just to give us some black swan event protection in case the market decided to take a plunge. Notice on the weekly chart that I felt comfortable doing this trade because we see here that again, Berkshire Hathaway had come back down to around the green 50 exponential moving average which served as support for it back in August. Another reason I felt comfortable doing this trade is because on this weekly chart, we see that Berkshire Hathaway had come back down to right at the green 50 exponential moving average on this weekly chart. That area coincided with, as you can see here, back in the summer, back in August, an area that has served as resistance for it. Remember, once resistance is broken, it tends to turn to support. And that's what we see was happening here. The only negative here is that I saw these big red high volume bars in Berkshire, which show that the sellers were fairly strong. But my confidence in this previous area of resistance turning into support, as well as the green 50 exponential moving average, as well as the fact that we are selling this strike price about $10 below that support level, all those factors combined help me feel comfortable doing this trade. One reason why I decided to do a credit spread instead of just selling the cash secure put option is because as you can see here with SPY, the S&P 500, this is the day we entered our trade in Berkshire Hathaway. I noticed that over the previous week, the overall market had dropped quite a bit. The overall market had dropped about 7%. So I wanted to buy that protective put option just in case the overall market in Berkshire Hathaway declined further. By buying that protective put option, we capped how much we might potentially lose if Berkshire were to crash below our protective put option strike price. Well, what happened with our trade? This is the day that we entered our bullish put credit spread. Notice that Berkshire Hathaway hung out around the red 200 exponential moving average on the daily chart but eventually it took off and topped out about a month later on January 12th. Here you see that on January 13th, we bought to close the Berkshire Hathaway January 20th, 285 cash secure put option for only five cents per share. As you've seen, bullish put credit spreads are a great way to minimize risk and provide protection in case the market goes against your positions. This technique allows you to receive fantastic returns while investing in excellent companies like Berkshire Hathaway. 
If you're new to option trading and you're trying to protect your portfolio during market declines, bullish put credit spreads are a strategy you should definitely consider using. If we look at the returns for this position, we're able to pocket a net of $2.42 per share during the 25 days that we're in this position. Based on the $55 per share that we had at risk, this resulted in a 64% annualized return on capital. However, please keep in mind that I strongly encourage traders not to use all their money on credit spreads. This is because of what would happen if the market were to decline below your protective put options. If that happened, you were using 100% of your account on credit spreads, your account could be completely wiped out. So while credit spread is a great tool to use, they're also something that you want to be very careful with. Here you see the return of a main option trading account as compared to the S&P 500 in December. In the red box, you see the breakdown of the daily returns. Our account is the blue bars. Here is the overall return for the month of December. Notice that the S&P 500 was down 5.76% and our account was only down 1.65%. So we beat the S&P 500 by over 4% in December. Notice that the max drawdown of the S&P 500 was over 7.1%, whereas our max drawdown in December was 3.4%. Finally, the sharp ratio of the S&P 500 was negative 4.15, and ours was quite a bit better. Remember, the higher the sharp ratio, the higher the number, the better. So ours was a lot better at only negative 0.187. That sharp ratio tells you that for the level of risk, our return was a lot better than the S&P 500s. And finally, the standard deviation, which remember a lower number here is better. Our portfolio's standard deviation beat the S&P 500 by over 25%. Now let's review our cash flow from selling options in the month of December. As a result of buying and selling options, we put a net of $12,736 cash into our pocket. Commission cost us $69, data fees were $32, we received $770 in dividends, and we were paid $735 in interest by Interactive Brokers. So in all, we put a net of $14,140 cash into our pocket as a result of selling options. If you run that return based on the $1.1 million we had at risk, it equates to a 15.1% annualized non-leveraged return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on margin was for the $143,000 $872 that Interactive Brokers on average said we needed, it equates to a 116% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to see all the trades we did last month in this main ops trading account, I post that monthly statement for everyone to see, patrons and non-patrons, on my patron account. The link is in the description below. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do stock and option trades, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. To see how we use our version of the upgraded option world strategy to generate consistent cash flow every single month, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled The Option Wheel Strategy Explained. Until next time, happy investing. We'll see you again soon.